The psoas is another muscle that can be super problematic for people. Uh, it can also be super problematic for people, uh, for clinicians that are trying to do dry needling uh, to the psoas because it is just so stinking deep. And in order to get into the psoas, you have to take a very long needle. So, uh, you know, a hundred or above needle and go in between vertebral segments, kind of in between the transverse processes, uh, go through all the erector spinae muscles, go through the multifida before you ever even get into the psoas. And the only way that anybody should, should do that is under ultrasound guidance. So you can make sure that you are exactly where you need to be and you can absolutely make sure that you can follow this needle down into the, the bottom depth that you need to be just past the multifida into the psoas muscle. Because if you're not using some type of imaging modality to make sure that you're doing that correctly and to make sure that you don't go too deep, then you're gonna go too deep. And then you're gonna risk doing some things that you don't wanna do. So this video is uh, how to needle the psoas, not how to needle the uh, iliacus. It's not how to needle where the two come together. This is actual psoas, which is right next to the vertebral bodies. The psoas is a very interesting muscle. According to Itza and colleagues and Simons and colleagues and Wise and Anderson and from 2010, uh, some of the referred pain and resulting symptoms for iliopsoas, because they, they combined the two when they looked at their uh, pain referral patterns. Uh, it gave you ipsilateral spine from the thoracic region to the sacroiliac and upper buttock region. So you had pain in those regions, anterior thigh and groin pain, and you could also have inguinal pain with the psoas as well. When we look at the actual anatomy, the origin of the psoas is the transverse processes and bodies of all lumbar vertebrae and the intervertebral fibrocartilage from T12 to, L, T12 to L5. So that already lets you know that this thing is deep. It's literally off the transverse processes and the bodies, so the vertebral bodies of those lumbar vertebrae. They insert the lesser trochanter of the femur with the iliacus. It's innervated by branches of nerves uh, L1 through L4. Uh, it's action, it does flexion of the thigh at the hip joint. And then when the femur is, is fixed, it can flex the trunk as if you're sitting up. Uh, when you look at the anatomy image to the right, you can see We've removed, obviously, the superficial muscles, so the latissimus is gone, uh, and we have removed the most superficial of our pair of vertebral muscles, so the latissimus thoracis is gone. We've removed, uh, obviously, the quadratus lumborum as well. We've removed the multifidi. You can clearly see the transverse processes, and then deep to those transverse processes, you have the psoas. And then you see just uh, at the top right of the side of that psoas, this little, little uh, reddish pink structure sticking out, that is your old kidney. So the kidneys are directly anterior to the psoas. So uh, if you don't remember anything else, remember that psoas is deep. It is a, is a very deep muscle. When we look at some of the precautions that we're concerned about when we're gonna do a dry needling of the psoas, uh, again, the kidneys are a bit concerned. So the location of the kidneys in most people the anatomical location of the kidneys, they're retroperitoneal, they're deep to the quadratus lumborum from T11 to L3. Now, the kidneys are what I would call intimately anterior to the psoas. So the kidneys, like psoas is here and the kidneys just loving up against it. So the kidneys is directly anterior to the psoas muscle. And then, as if that's not enough, if you just look at the picture there, you've got a lot of, uh, a lot of yellow things going on. Well, those yellow things are exiting lumbar nerve roots and their branches, such as the femoral nerve, the iliohypogastric, uh, and the ilioinguinal nerve. You've got your lateral femocutaneous nerve, and you have your genitofemoral nerve. Uh, lots of nerve roots coming out from that region of the psoas. So we insert slowly, and we are very aware of uh, nerve sensation reported by a patient. So when I'm inserting this needle into the psoas, I'm constantly talking to the patient, like, how's that feel? Does that feel achy? Does that feel crampy? Uh, let me know if you start to feel any tingling. Let me know if you feel any lightning bolts. Let me know if you feel any shooting tingles. Uh, because again, there's just so many nerve structures and uh, it's cool to do this with ultrasound. So I can see the needle go in and I can see exactly where it is in, in between the segments, but I can't see all those little nerves. I'm, maybe a radiologist could, but I can't see all those little nerves on ultrasound. So, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm being very talkative with my patient and letting them know what they should feel. And then uh, if they don't feel the achy crankiness that I want them to feel and they start to feel the sparkly tingles and, and the lightning bolts and stuff, then, you know, we've got we've got to reevaluate our life decisions and we need to readjust that needle because we're too close to some of the nervous structures that we don't want to hit. When you look at this image, the longissimus thoracis, which again is our most superficial of our erector muscles. So the longissimus thoracis, the multifidi, and the quadratus lumborum are uh, removed in this image. For transducer positioning, we'll start in the short axis with a transducer on top of a spinous process, and then we'll move into the paravertebral gutter and we'll rotate the ultrasound transducer in the uh, longitudinal axis.
Now you'll see a live ultrasound view. That first uh, black spot that you see is the, the spinous process. And now I'm rotating the ultrasound transducer into the, the long axis. And now I see those three little knots at the bottom of the screen. They look like three little knuckles. Those are the transverse processes. The psoas actually lives deep to the multifidi in between those transverse processes. Here's a nice still image of that ultrasound scan. So those three little mountains that you see are the transverse processes of the vertebrae. In between those transverse processes, kind of towards the bottom, is the psoas. On top of the psoas is the multifidi. And then the erector spinae is all the stuff on top of it. But those three little things that look like mountains are your transverse processes of the vertebrae. Now that you can see a colored image, you have the skin, you have the adipose tissue, you have the erector spinae muscles there in orange, and then those three little mountains that you saw were the transverse processes. Those three brown spots are the transverse processes of the vertebrae. We are in the space between the spinous process and the transverse process, so those blue things that you see are going to be the multifidi muscles. And then deep to the multifidi, directly in between the transverse processes, so it would be anterior to the multifidi, is going to be your psoas muscle. So that's why you need uh, the ultrasound to be able to see where those transverse processes are, and then be able to uh, go through the multifidi into the psoas muscle. Now that you have an idea of what the psoas looks like on ultrasound and what the transverse processes look like on ultrasound and, and their relation to the vertebral body and the relation to the psoas, uh, which is deep to the multifidi, uh, in between those transverse processes, we'll show you what ultrasound guided dry needling of the psoas looks like, which, which again is uh, what I think is the smartest and safest and should be the only way that you're throwing a uh, 100 millimeter needle in somebody's back trying to get into the psoas muscle. So uh, watch this video and then see what you think about how we needle the psoas under ultrasound guidance. This is some complicated stuff, so you know this demonstration is intended as a resource for previous students and licensed clinicians who can perform dry needling in their practice action jurisdiction, so don't do this if you're not supposed to. When we look at the equipment that you're going to need to do this uh, deep dry needling of the psoas and ultrasound guidance, you're obviously going to need an ultrasound machine. So we're going to use a, a convex transducer head, or also called a curved linear or a curvilinear transducer head, because we're going pretty deep. So we need that type of uh, transducer head to be able to see deeper. And then you need something to clean the transducer head before you use it. So you can't use alcohol because that's actually bad for a transducer head. So what you use is a cavi wipe or you look at the, the manual that came with ultrasound to see the type of cleaner that you can use, but you cannot use alcohol. You definitely need, speaking of alcohol, you definitely need gloves and you definitely need alcohol. You gotta do a thorough alcohol wipe down before you try to do a ultrasound guided dry digging technique. And then obviously we're gonna use gloves as well. And then you need a needle. So I like to use the Myotech needles. Uh, you need a pretty long needle for psoas. So you probably need 75 to 100 millimeters to, to be able to get through all those layers to get into the psoas muscle, depending on the size of the patient. And then you need some ultrasound gel. So if you're going to needle through ultrasound gel, you cannot use that old uh, bottle of blue ultrasound goo that you've been refilling for the past seven years. That thing is so full of bacteria. It is so gross. There is absolutely no way that you can stick a needle through that uh, and maintain a sterile technique. So what you need is sterile ultrasound gel. You can pay a lot of money for some, some fancy, bougie, uh, medical grade sterile ultrasound gel that physicians will use for ultrasound guided procedures. Or you can go on the cheap route and you can get sterile lubricating jelly. You use enough lubricating jelly, it is just like ultrasound gel. And this stuff is sterile. It is in individual packets and it is a fraction of the cost. So I like to use the sterile uh, lubricating jelly for my ultrasound guided techniques. To kind of get an idea of where we're going to be and what we're going to do, I like to do a little drawing first. So what I do is I find the spinous process. I roll my finger to the edge of the spinous process. And I like to mark the edge of the spinous process. You can always check out our dry needling of the lumbar multifidi video, uh, and you can see the same technique. But I felt the spinous process, I felt the edge of the spinous process, I marked that, and now that horizontal line that I'm marking is I'm filling the space in between the spinous processes. That space in between the spinous process is basically where I'm gonna be sticking my needle to go in between the transverse process. So I'm marking that line, which will help me find it a little bit easier while I'm using ultrasound. Of course, we're going to use alcohol. Of course, we're going to use gloves. So this is a clean technique. So we're going to use an alcohol wipe down. I would scrub way more aggressively if I wasn't recording a video, but, but I don't want to wipe off all the markings so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, normally, I would scrub that uh, extensively with alcohol ever. And you can see we're using the sterile ultrasound gel. You want to make sure you use enough because if you don't have enough gel on the transducer, your image isn't going to be quite as good. So again, we're uh, kind of spreading out the ultrasound gel, and then we're going to... Uh, basically use the transducer to kind of rock it back and forth to find the image that we want to uh, use as a guide to get our needle inserted. So I found the image that I wanted and I'm taking this 100 millimeter needle, I tap it into the tissue 
Uh, and here's a prime example of a long needle that's difficult to get in. So then I kind of pause what I'm doing, I take an alcohol wipe, I used it to grab the needle to be able to get the needle inserted into the tissue a little bit better because again it's longer so it's a little bit harder to get in and then I can reacquire my image. This is an out of plane needle technique so I'm kind of sticking the needle in on the side of the ultrasound transducer as opposed to being in line with the ultrasound transducer. And then now we'll see what this looks like on ultrasound screens. You can see those three little knuckles at the bottom, those three little mountain looking things or it looks like little knuckles that would be on a hand are the uh, transverse processes. So you'll see the needle kind of start to come in. You see just a little bit of movement there in the middle. And actually, uh, I hit the edge of the transverse process. So I hit a bone. So I'm, obviously I don't want to hit a bone when I'm doing this. So I had to readjust my needle. So I had to pull it back a little bit and redirect, redirect it a little bit caudally. Uh, and that way I could slide in between the uh, transverse process segments there. So now I've redirected the needle and you'll start to see a little bit of movement a little bit higher. And then as the needle starts getting in, kind of at the level of the, yeah, there you go, you can see it all the way in between the uh, transverse processes. I'm pointing to it with my finger. Way down in between those transverse processes is where the psoas muscle is because I have to go through the, all the erector muscles, through the multifida, in between the transverse processes, and then I'm into the psoas. Now you can see that 100 millimeter needle uh, and I'm putting a little e-stem on it uh, and he is not complaining of any nervy type sensations. All he feels is muscle contraction and the, the achy radiating referred pain. You can see with the electricity, you can see uh, all the movement obviously of the more superficial muscles, so the erector muscles through the multifida, but you can also see movement in between those transverse processes as well. And we know that we're all the way down into the psoas muscle. It really shows you how long this needle is when you see me start to remove it. So again, I'm looking under ultrasound guidance, you see this needle coming out and you're just like, oh my gosh, it never stops coming. Uh, that is a 100 millimeter needle and it was all the way deep through his multifida in between his segments and all the way down into his psoas. Because psoas is so deep, I really think the only uh, safe way to needle psoas is with real-time ultrasound guidance. That way you can know exactly the depth that you're going without uh, penetrating something that you don't want to puncture.